In this tutorial, I'll be sharing some ideas for how to improve talking head shots, like this one from an interview that I shot just the other day. And it's okay, but I'd say it's a little on the dark side and doesn't have a lot of contrast between the lit areas and the darker areas. So I want to see what I can do to improve this. Also, I feel like it's kind of a little too warm colored and maybe we can fix the white balance. So the first thing to do is select the clip, of course, and then we will go to the color workspace and let's work on the white balance first by opening up the basic correction section, going to the white balance eyedropper and selecting that and then choosing something that should be a pure white like maybe this napkin here. Let's click on that. And now we can see the shot gets a lot more blue, I think a little too much. So I'm gonna go here to where it says temperature and manually adjust this until I like it. So I'm gonna slide this more back toward the orange. I think right about there looks pretty natural. Okay, that's good. Now this shot is obviously underexposed. To fix this, I'm going to go to curves and clicking here and now we're going to drag upward and this is going to brighten up the mid-tones and yeah that looks a lot better but you know it's brightening up the whole shot including the background and now i feel like the bookshelf is a little too prominent and looks kind of lit too much so i'm going to undo this and we're going to get a little more fancy here and we're going to do some compositing so that we can brighten up just the man and not the background. Now the simplest way to do that is with just an oval mask around his face because the face is really what we care most about. First we have to create a duplicate layer. So I'm going down to the clip. I'm holding down my option key and then dragging upward. So I now have two versions of the clip. I'm gonna click on the top version and now Go back to my curves and brighten up the whole shot till I think the face looks good. But now I want to isolate just the face. And the simplest, quickest way to do that is with an oval mask. So here in the opacity section of the effect controls, I'm in the effect controls tab up here. I'm going to the oval mask, clicking on that. And there I get an oval mask and I can move it over the face and then resize it to match up with the face better. Then I can even rotate it. So let's see, there's rotation. And of course, we wanna make this subtle. So we have to go over to here where it says mask feather. It's set as a default at 10%. Let's make that bigger. Let's render that and see how it looks. I think that looks a lot better, but you know, if we have some more time, how about we increase the lighting on his body and the chair as well? So I'm gonna get rid of this mask. I'm going here to where it says mask one, and I'm going to delete that. The blue oval hangs around for a while like a ghost, but the mask itself is actually gone. And then we're going to create a new mask by going to the free draw Bezier tool, the little pen tool here. And I'm gonna start drawing around this man, but I wanna go outside of the frame. So I have to switch from fit to something that will make the viewer smaller, the view smaller. 75% works on my computer. On your computer, you might have to go smaller. And now with the pen tool, I'm gonna start clicking around here. I'm gonna grab the whole chair. And this is all the foreground stuff that I want. Okay, and now obviously we have to feather this mask. And let's take a look. There we go. Now, as you can see, the man looks more prominently lit and is standing out more against the background, which is what we want. Now, this is relatively easy to do as long as your subject doesn't move too much. And luckily with interviews, that's usually not a problem. But if somebody does suddenly start to move, 
Let's see what he does in the rest of this shot. Yeah, he suddenly turns to get a drink from his iced tea. And so he's going to leave the masked area. You can see how he's moving into the dark area. So what we can do if we have the patience is animate the mask, make the mask move to follow the man's movement. So what we would do is go to the point where it starts to become a problem there where he starts to move and then we have to click where here where it says mask one now it shows the mask and then what we do is keyframe the mask and this becomes now what's called a traveling mat and you would click here there's a keyframe button next to mask path and that makes a keyframe there and then to see the mask again, we have to double click on mask one. And then we have to start moving that mask. Now I go down to the timeline and start going forward. And there he moves a lot. And then I would go and grab these points. And that creates a new keyframe. And then, you know, we would go back to the timeline and move forward. And you don't have to do this frame by frame. You can go four or five frames forward. And then we would have to continue moving the mask. And the mask will follow the person as he moves. Now, of course, this is a rather tedious process. And luckily, most of the time with interviews, we don't have to do this. I just wanted to let you know that it is possible. Now, if we have the time and patience, we can get even more creative with post-production lighting effects. If we decide, say, maybe, oh, I think the lighting here is a little too flat. I would like to make this part of the face pop a little more. Well, let's try doing that. So I'm going down to my top layer, holding down the Option key, dragging upward, creating a new version of it. And then I'm going to remove this mask and now I'm going to draw a brand new mask with the free draw bezier. And I'm going to trace around the leading edge of his face. And now I'm going to brighten that up even more. Yeah, make that pop a little more. And then, of course, I have to really feather the edge of that mask quite a bit. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to turn that off and on, off and on. I think that works very nicely. Now let's look at another case with an interview shot of our good friend David Anthony. And this shot has one major problem. We can see that David is in soft focus. The sharp focus is actually on the lamp in the background. Now this is a pretty extreme soft focus. And so I'm not sure how much we can do to help it. So I'm going to go to video effects over here in the effects area and open up blur and sharpen. And I'm going to go to sharpen. And now we are going to grab this slider and slide it to the right. And it's doing a little. Let's look at it full screen. And yeah, you can see it has this noise and it's not a whole lot sharper. So I don't think I wanna go that far. Uh, I'm just gonna to go to about 50% and it, uh, it has less noise, but it's, it's certainly still not sharp. What can we do? Well, one of my mottos in video editing is that when you can't make something better, sometimes it actually helps to make something worse. And that's what we're gonna do here. Part of the problem with this shot is that David's head is clearly out of focus and the lamp is in focus. Now, if we were to maybe make the lamp in the background less in focus, David might look a little more in focus. So I am going to remove the sharpening for now from this. And then I'm gonna make a copy of it. I'm holding down the Option key, dragging this upward. And so now we're gonna draw a mask around David. And now let's apply that sharpening filter to the top layer. Let's go to 50%. Okay, now let's go to the bottom layer. And now we're gonna apply a Gaussian blur. I'm gonna double click here and then go to blurriness. 
and let's see what that does okay the background's getting blurry i mean we can make it super blurry but that looks kind of crazy let's make it about 25 percent and go take a look at it now on a small screen this is probably going to look pretty good on a big screen well things aren't sharp but at least david is sharper than the background our eyes always go to whatever's in sharp focus and so our eyes should not be going to the lamp they should be going to david so i like this the last thing I want to show you is how to add a vignette. So I'm selecting the bottom layer of this gentleman's shot, going to the color workspace and to the vignette area and dragging this slider next to amount to a negative number. And then you see how this darkens the corners of the frame. Now let's do the same thing with David. And notice how darkened corners makes our eyes go more to the face, which is a really nice effect. To wrap up this tutorial, let's do a couple of before and after comparisons. Here's the gentleman in the armchair before we worked on him and after. I think that's quite an improvement. And here is David before we worked on it and after working on it. And it's certainly not perfect, but I feel it's better. So there you have some ideas for ways to fix problems and make improvements on talking headshots.